if you use the word semitic at all, it implies that you are ignorant and ill-informed and unread because intelligent people who have a, a, a very good education, uh, a very good rounded education of the world they live in, would not use the word semitic. It, you know, it, it's, it's a word you don't use in public uh, unless you don't know. Uh, if you're ignorant and ill-informed, you use words and people who are wise and intelligent will know, obviously, that you don't know what you're talking about. I mean, I like that scripture. Basically, it says in the Bible to <clears throat> uh, keep your mouth shut and let everyone think that you're a fool instead of opening your mouth and proving it. So uh, I think that you need to understand where words come from. The very word Semitic is, as I said, uh, a word that should not be used at all because it has no lawful and legal and legitimate foundation for using that term. It comes from the word uh, Shem. Actually, originally it's Shemetic. And then we, we take it and change it in, in our English today. We call it Semetic. No, it's Shemetic, S-H. And it comes from the story in the Bible of Noah and the ark. And Noah and the ark, we all have heard, Noah had his wife and then he had three sons and they had three wives. So there was Noah and his wife and his three sons and their three wives. So now we're talking about eight people. We know that if you take the letter eight and lay it down on its side, it becomes a symbol for infinity. You can ask any Jewish rabbi, any rabbinical authority, what is the symbolism in Judaism for the number eight? Is it important? And then you will have to sit for an hour while the rabbi explains to you all of the mysticism in the Jewish religion based on the number eight. And the first thing he will tell you is that eight, when it's laid down on its side, becomes a symbol for infinity. Because eight is the only number that you can write on a piece of paper uh, with a pen or a pencil and never take your, uh, never lift the, pa uh, the pen from the paper. You can make the eight backward, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. You can make the eight continual and never lift your pen or pencil off the paper. And so, as I said, you lay it down on its side and it becomes a symbol for infinity, forever. You can just sit there and draw an eight forever. And so, eight has a symbolic meaning in the Jewish religion. So, already, it's very questionable about there were eight people on the Ark of Noah. The second and most important point about the word Semitic is that one of uh, Noah's sons, he had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Japheth. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. So therefore, we're supposed today to have three major lineages of humans on the earth. The Shemetic, which we call Semetic, and the, the, the Hemetic, Hem, Ham, Hemetic, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And the Japhetic. Well, first of all, there was no Noah and the ark to start with. It's just a story. It was taken from a far more ancient story in the Middle East of, uh, uh, what was the name of that uh, fable uh, where the God tells the king that he's going to flood the earth and to build an ark. Um, a lot of people know what I'm talking about, but my, my, it slips my mind right now. It's called the, uh, oh, the Gilgamesh Epic. Yeah, the Epic of Gilgamesh, and, and this right. is, it, the funny thing is that's the most recognizable one, but quite honestly, as you well know, there is more than one place where one can find the template long pr before the Old Testament or the... Oh, absolutely, no doubt about it. But I just was thinking about that particular one, it's yeah. so well known that it's called the Gilgamesh Epic. 
Right. And uh, and the story goes back to the old ancient Sumerians, a thousand years before you know Noah would have even been born, uh, thousand years before Noah would have existed. And the story was is that uh, in the Gilgamesh epic, uh, it's an ancient story about how God was going to flood the earth. And so he told the great king to gather his family and, and take uh, uh, all the animals and put them into an ark, and he's going to destroy the earth, etc., etc. Well, uh, so today we have in the Old Testament the old Gilgamesh epic, but we call it the uh, the Ark of Noah, Noah's Ark. And so we now know that it was just a, uh, it was just a story uh, based on an earlier story. And so if that's, if that's true, which it is, and it's provable, we know that's true, then that means there was no Noah and there was no ark. Well, if there was no Noah and no ark, then there was no Shem, Ham, or Japheth. And there was no eight people who came off the ark. We know that is true. It's, there was no such ark. And we know that the earth was never, under any circumstances, ever uh, flooded with water. We know that. Logic alone would tell you. You don't even have to go to school to figure that one out. Logic would tell you that the earth itself was not overflowed with water. Yes, we do have oceans, but we do have but large continents too. And they're not under water. And so, and we also know scientifically uh, and mathematically that you cannot surround the whole earth with water. There's not that much water there. Not that much water on the earth to submerge the whole world under water. And if that were true, which it obviously isn't, but if it were, where did the water go? You know, where did it go? And, and so, well, then you break it all down and you finally see, no, the story of Noah and the Ark and his three sons and all of that was a beautiful story, but it just goes back a thousand years earlier to another time and another story from another culture. Mm. So and therefore, there was no... About that, though, just really quickly, I'm wondering yeah. this, because the concept that there may have been a local occurrence to a particular area that became absolutely decimated by a tsunami, by a flood... Uh, whatever, that this could have actually occurred in some way at some point in history and then mm. evolved into this story that became part of the Gilgamesh epic, uh, part of these things that we see being written down, where there could have been a, a, yes. a natural disaster at one point in time. You yes. can see evidence of that on the earth, right? So that, <clears throat> you Absolutely. Know, you can see it. And the mountains of the world, the mountains of the earth, all have, you can see strata cuts in the, in the mountain sides and the hills where the strata was erupted. Yes, there was absolutely a terrible destruction that did happen on the earth. And it did cause a horrible flood. Yes, and the flood is part of so many hundreds of cultures in the world, from Native Americans, Africans, Asians, people from from Europe, Russia. There are all these ancient cultures and, and peoples. They talk about a massive flood. And I, and I am of the opinion that's exactly what happened. There was a massive flood, but there wasn't no Noah, and there was no Ark, but there was a flood. And the flood, I am totally convinced, after looking at the subject for 60 years, is what Plato was talking about when he talked about Atlantis. It says that Atlantis was destroyed. It was an enormous continent like or similar to Australia. It's not just a little island. No, no, it was a huge island. It was a continent. And it was in, uh, from what Plato said, Solon, the Egyptian my mystical teacher, told, uh, you know, told the ancient Greeks that there was a great and enormous uh, uh, continent in the Atlantic Ocean. It's not there today, but at one time there was a great continent in, in, Atlant in the Atlantic. 
and it was called Atlantis, from which we get the word Atlantic, from Atlas, or at, uh, from Atlantis. And so the, the story goes from, from what uh, <clears throat> Solon, the Egyptian teacher, told uh, uh, you know, Plato and the other Greeks <clears throat> that this great continent, the size and large, uh, as large as Australia, and one day and one night went under the ocean. Well, we understand how that could be because if you go back and read the scriptures in Genesis about the destruction of Atlantis, and that's what it's talking about in the Bible in Genesis. And it says, and one day and one night, the, 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 the scripture says the, um, the, what's the word? It was, uh, it says the, the deep opened up. It not only rained for many, many days hard all over that area of the earth was heavy, terrible rains and flooding, but it says, but the, the deep, the ground of the deep, talking about the floor of the ocean, it says the deep cracked open and the continent fell into the ocean. They fell through the cracks in the ocean that was holding the continent up. But the but the floor of the ocean, the Bible says, was was cracked, and the whole entire uh, continent dropped into the ocean, and the waters came over, it and it's gone forever. Well, the, if that were to happen, you can imagine if if if, if Australia was to drop down many 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 miles in, in one hour dropped down into the ocean because the ocean plates opened up and the whole continent went under. You can imagine that it's going to cause one hell of a reaction all over the earth. And people for thousands of years will remember and tell their, their children about the great event of, of a great uh, continent being destroyed in, in just an hour or two, a few hours, and it was gone forever. Well, that's the story of Atlantis, that the, that the waters of the deep broke open and, uh, and the world fell into it and it was a great flood. Well, I understand that. That makes sense. And so I believe Atlantis actually existed and I think that's probably where the Adam and Eve were created. I think that's probably a lot of interesting things that we read in the Bible actually was talking about something that happened in Atlantis. Because the Atlantis story does say what the Bible says. It was destroyed overnight. It was a great flood. And, and, and the continent and the whole world of that time dropped into the ocean. Well, right. And the interesting thing here is that, it, you know, for somebody who says, well, this still sounds like a flight of fantasy. Here's what it is. The story in and of itself does not have to be accurate. It represents something that might have actually occurred. And, uh, and, and I believe it did. And, and I think it was something more akin to what we saw when, you know, the Fukushima disaster happened, right? Mm -hmm. Where you have a, a great earthquake which occurred under the, uh, uh, you know, under the water. Okay. And then because of the cracking and the twisting of the earth, a huge, tsunami was created and if you imagine this on a larger scale and say japan disappeared in 2011 as opposed to just what happened which was a horrendous natural disaster but if you imagine that japan disappeared you think there wouldn't be stories about that for the next couple thousand <coughs> if not forever <laughs> you, you know got how that. You yeah. got that right that's exactly right if, if japan had gone under because of the plates holding up the pacific ocean were to really crack, and Japan as a nation just sunk under. Within 24 hours, it was gone forever. And millions of people died instantly, and it's gone forever. You can bet that that story will, will chase the world for thousands of years to come. They will be talking about the great tsunami and the great earthquake in which, uh, in which millions of people died instantly. Yeah, well, that's what it's, that's what the Bible talks about. How the whole world was consumed by water and people died, 
And well, it goes back to the Gilgamesh epic. So the bottom line is, yeah, there's the stories out there, but you need to go back and look at where the stories came from. And if there was no, like I said, if there was no Noah and Ark and his wife and three sons, then there was no Shem. And if there was no Shem, then there was no Shemetic people. And if there's no Shemetic people, then there was no Semitic people. It's just a word we use. And so that's why I'm saying there was no need to use the word Semitic because it's based on Shemetic. And, and that was one of the sons of Noah who didn't exist.